I got a call um, from uh, Charles Shire and Nancy Myers, and they had read a Golden Girls that I wrote called The Audit, and they really liked it, so they called me in, and they ended up hiring me as, I believe I was a supervising producer on that show. And that show was a single camera film show, which I was really excited about because um, that was something that I studied in um, college was film. And my background really was film, which translates great into, you know, multi-camera. Uh, but it was great to get back to film. And I really uh, enjoyed their work as writers. And uh, it was, I believe there was another strike around that time so I think it was after a strike also that I went and took that job. Multicamera is almost like doing a little theater production every week. Um, you're constantly changing things and changing the actors and, you know, honing everything. Whereas on the film show, you're, you've got your script locked, you've got cameras five days a week, and uh, you're shooting a little film every week. So you can't, you know, throw in jokes and uh, there's no live audience and so, you know, your rhythm has to be a little bit different. You have to think about how everything's going to cut together a little bit more than you do in tape. Um, it was great going on location. We had excellent crew that uh, Charles and Nancy put together because their background was film. Um, it was it was great because it was kind of back to my film roots, and, and I really enjoyed that part of it. It's actually based on the movie Baby Boom about a woman who inherits uh, a distant relative's baby. And she is a high achieving corporate type of person who has never really been maternal. And uh, so having a kid is really alien to her. And this particular series is based on her being in Manhattan, working uh, a high, a high, uh, what, what would I call it? A high paying uh, corporate job that's very time consuming and trying to raise this kid. And she has a nanny. Kate Jackson played the part. And the nanny was Joy Behar. <laughs> she was playing a, ger a German nanny in the first episodes. And uh, it's just about parenting you know, when you don't know anything about parenting and trying to have a dating life and a corporate life. And when you have a template like the movie to, as inspiration, is that helpful or is that not even an issue when you're on a series like that? Well, it was because the writers of the movie were the executive producers of the film. So they, you know, wanted to do particular things. I was really there to kind of help them <laughs> transition from movies to television because they had had a horrible experience. They wrote Private Benjamin and Private Benjamin also became a television show and that was a very bad experience for them apparently. And so now they were gonna try it again and uh, so I was kind of there to help them bridge you know, between how it's done. And I remember we had, there were, there was basically no staff. It was me, Nancy, Donald Margulies, who's gone on to write plays and win the Pulitzer Prize. And uh, that was it. And so I told them, you know, what, what we should do first is like hire some writers. <laughs> so I think we ended up hiring a, a, a few writers. We hired, uh, Reisman, uh, oh, I forget, Jer Reisman and Stevens, who have gone on to do very well, and another team. And uh, so we would break stories, right? We break stories, and it would take a while to break the story. And then Nancy and Charles would go, this is so hard. Do we have to do this again? I was like, yeah, you have to do it 12 times because you have 12 episodes. And they were just like, they didn't, they didn't like it at all. And they worked out of their house. And they were very um, hands-on with their kids. So they would have these little babies around all the time. <laughs> 
So we would have to go to their house and we would pitch the stories and everything. And it was kind of a new thing for Kate as well because she had not done Half Hour. I don't think her last TV experience had ended that well. She was really going out on a limb and really putting a lot of faith in Shires and Myers, Shire and Myers, and they kind of, you know, it's the difference between movies and television. You know, those movie people, they're just, you know, they stick their nose up a little bit. And so there was a little tension with Kate. It was, it was hard, it was very hard. And I know it was hard for them because they were not used to a television schedule, you know. They, I call them, you know, they're like at the country club, you know. They write a few hours, do a little shopping, you know. <laughs> and we had Laserdisc at that time. We edited on Laserdisc, and that was horrible, because if you got a bug, it would just shut down the whole thing, and you couldn't edit anything. And we shot it in a, um, we shot in an old air conditioning studio in Glendale. So they had, to, because it was big enough, we had a huge, um, a huge conference room set and like the whole interior of a corporate building and then there was her apartment. It was all downstairs. The production, uh, the production offices were upstairs, but it wasn't like a real sound stage. So every time they were shooting downstairs, there would be a light going. And if you were walking upstairs, you had to stop and freeze until the take was over. <laughs> So you'd be walking upstairs and then you just, and everybody would just go like that and then you just wait for the light. <laughs> it was ridiculous. So why do you think the show didn't last? I think it didn't last because I don't think it was what the network really wanted. Brandon Tartikoff was in charge of the network at that time and Warren Littlefield was our network um, liaison. And they just, had in their mind the stories they wanted to tell. And I remember we got called to the network. Well, first of all, the first day of shooting, Kate Jackson walked off the set. I remember that. And we had to write a big apology letter to get her to come back. So then she came back, and then we got called to the network. So uh, Nancy Charles and I went to the network, and we had a meeting with uh, Brandon Tartikoff. And I remember Brandon saying, you know, we need to have some kind of signature for the show. For instance, when, when, when Bill Cosby sits down with Theo, you know what is coming, you know? And they go, oh, you want us to do a family show? This isn't a family show. And then he would try to use another example, and they would, they would just like, argue with him about everything. And so finally, David Gerber, it was a, uh, he was at, I forget what the studio was, he was the head of the studio, and he went crazy. And he's like, I know you people can write funny. I know it. I know Private Benjamin, the, the ink came out of the shower. I know you can write funny, but you won't do it. And so he went one way, and then they got really mad, and they went the other way. And I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe this. And so then uh, Vicki Horowitz, I think, came in to us and said, you know, that was Brandon Tartikoff trying to save your show. And you guys, you know, cut him off. And so then Nancy and Charles, we all drove back and, and they said, well, Winnie, what did you think of the meeting? And I go, <laughs> I said, that's the worst network meeting I've ever been in in my life. I can't believe what you said to Brandon Tartikoff. And they just said, mm. And then they just started laughing. <laughs> and then we were canceled. <laughs> and, but you know, what can you say? It was a great experience. I learned so much from them. They were the memo kings. They used to memo everything. I had a stack of memos that big. And you could not say one word that was not written. You couldn't add a word. You couldn't do anything. They were like Stanley Kubrick, right? <laughs> that was their hero. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but we're doing comedy, you know? Um, wow. But that was a great, that, it was interesting. It was interesting.